Not only is she a Broadway legend and the original Marion the Librarian in The Music Man, but for my money, she is the best cabaret saloon singer going today. Barbara Cook, <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on Theater Talk. Thank, Thank you for coming you. tonight. I'm happy to be here again. The Music Man, uh, this big new revival. You, of course, were in the original. Can you just take us back to maybe the time that you, you heard the first, Meredith Wilson's first song that he wrote for the show, the first time you heard that Music Man sound, that score? Well, um... I was in, I think, Herb Green, the, uh, the conductor. Mm -hmm. I believe it was his apartment. And I was with Andy Griffith, who was being considered for the role of Harold Hill. And uh, I, 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 I was there, of course. I can't remember who else was there. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I heard the score. Meredith played some of it, and, and I believe Herbie Green played some of it. And Meredith did Trouble for us. Nobody has ever done trouble quite the way Meredith did it. It was <laughs> sensational. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I had never heard that kind of zingspiel thing before. Do you know where I think it came from? Hmm. I don't know that this is fact, but um, do you remember? Well, you're too young. But uh, you. the <laughs> last really big uh, live radio show was called The Big Show mm -hmm. with Tallulah Bankhead mm -hmm. and Meredith Wilson was the musical director for that show and um, instead of having the commercials read by an announcer, an announcer he came up with the idea they had a chorus uh, as part of the show it was a huge show big orchestra everything uh, he had the chorus read the the commercials in rhythmic speech. Uh. And I remember that very well. They were just dynamite. And I, I don't know if that's the first time I ever did that, but I would imagine that's where, that, yeah. that all of that Music Man stuff came out of that. Mm -hmm. When you heard him play the score for the first time, did you think, this is a good one, this is going to be a hit? You well, know, I guess you never really know. Never, but. never know that. Right, right. But I certainly thought it was mighty, mighty good stuff and very interesting. You know, the, the, that uh, Rock Island opening, yeah. mm -hmm. I'd never heard anybody do anything like that. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. It's wonderful work. What was Meredith Wilson like? He was a uh, very friendly, uh, gregarious, affable kind of guy, um, very a, a performer, mm. really a performer and uh, cheerful and extremely generous of spirit. And, and on opening night, uh, he was convinced, of course, that we were an enormous hit. Of course, the other uh, great force of the show, so still identified with it, was, was Robert Preston. Oh, it's force is the word, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, w what was he like to work with? Well, sensational. Yeah. He was just, we never had a crossword of any kind. Um, he was just a force of nature, I'm mm -hmm. telling you. You know, I think one of the reasons the show was the enormous hit that it was, a lot of it has to do with Robert, I think. The show is, it's a wonderful piece and it's wonderfully put together. But there, the coming together of Bob Preston with that role was so extraordinary because nobody expected him to be able to do something like that. And right. they he didn't was not a song him. and dance man, no, right? He'd never sung. And, and they didn't want him at first. They tried, like well, this year, they tried all these people. other people. Right? Yeah. Who um, else did they try? Um, oh, uh, Danny Kaye, I know. What, was Turned Danny Kaye for? Yeah. And the one who was closest, I think, I, oh, I talked about him last night. Um, mm. Dan Daly blew it oh, off. But he, he um, Ray Bolger. Ray oh, Bolger, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that would be very different. Ray Bolger. <laughs> yeah, because Ray Bolger was wonderful, but he wasn't sexy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think Harold Hill's got to be sexy. Absolutely. I hope this new guy is sexy. Yeah, he's a, he's we, a, we have a very good guy. Sexy. <laughs> Craig Barrico, yeah, yeah, he is very well, good looking. Well, nice certainly guy. Robert Preston <laughs> was a very sexy guy, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. Do you know the other thing is how incredibly well he moved? Mm. Do you know that's one of the things that people talked about is mm. this kind of cat like thing that he had, you know, just <laughs> wonderful. Oh, God, he was good. And the show, did the show come together fairly easily? I mean, you know, sometimes Broadway's full of stories of uh, all the Sturm and Drang putting together a Broadway show, but was this a smooth experience for, for, for you? I think for the most part. First yeah. of all, everybody got along, and that really helps a lot. Unusual in the theater. Well, no, it's not that unusual, yeah. but it helps. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly can go the other way. Um, we worked very hard on the show, and some of the things that we thought were going to work didn't work out of town. Well, let me back up a little bit. Sure. Um, when we did the gypsy run-through, you know, the for 
anybody who might not know, that's the first time you really have an audience. And it used to be that you, it was the, the last thing you would do before you left to go out of town for the out-of-town tryouts. Right. And your friends and family and colleagues, a lot of professional people, would, would come to a theater. And no sets, no costumes, and a couple of pianos, and you do the show for the first time for an audience. Well, this run-through was pretty amazing. It was the first time people did that rhythmic clapping at the end to 76 trombones right, for our, right. our uh, bows. I, that never failed once in the whole year and a half I was there. The audience never failed to do that. But do you know, not only did people stand and cheer at the end of this, but they stood on top of the theater seats. They just stood wow. up, you know, on the, on the what do you call it, arm yeah, yeah. They just stood up. It was an amazing thing. And, uh, of course, the, the company was thrilled. And then the next day, Teak DaCosta, who was the director, gave us a big speech. He said, listen, he says, you may be thrilled by this, but I want to tell you, it scares me to death because I'm so afraid that people are going to think we've got it. And he said, we must not think that. Mm. And we worked just as hard on that show out of town as any show I've ever done that didn't work. Mm. Uh, new songs went in. A there lot was, of rewriting out of town. Yeah. Um, um, you know, Iowa stubborn. Oh, there's nothing halfway about the Iowa way to treat you, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They put another song in out of town, tried it. Uh, was in for maybe three performances, out, and Iowa stubborn was back in. All kinds of changes. The, the opening did not work out of town. Really? The Rock Island number. Really? On the, tra the train, yeah, all the whole scene didn't Well, work. originally it was scored. There was there was some kind of orchestra underneath, and the, it wasn't working. Mm. And I don't know whose idea it was. I think it may have been Teak, who said, "Let's try it, a cappella." Mm. And that it was then I was in the rehearsal room the day he came up with the idea of the guys doing this. They made the rhythm instead of having drums or the rhythm section. Uh, give the pulse. The guys gave the pulse. Well, the moment that happened, it was just oh, it was amazing. Yeah. And then the show was really, really, really off. And when you put that up for the first time in front of an audience, they they must have never never heard of anything like no. that on a Broadway show before. No, I mean, oh, it's an a cappella number. Yeah. But yeah. it was dynamite. Yeah. I don't know how they do that. I'm so anxious to see the show. Oh, it's great. I'm not, I'm not going to give away the surprises because in this revival, terrific. there are lots of surprises. Susan Stroman's work is just just brilliant. Well, I'll only be able to see the first act. Because you got to run to the Carlisle. Because I have to run but, and do, do my show. And now in your show at the Carlisle, you do Trouble. Yes. Carol Hill's big number. Yes. Do you know, I used to stand in the wings. Yes. Because when Bob was doing it, because my, my first entrance was right after that song. Yeah. Right. And so... I heard it hundreds of times, and some of it had stuck in my head. Um, putting it together was not easy, and oddly enough, uh, some of the lines that seem the simplest are the most were the most difficult to learn mm -hmm. because the rhythm the rhythm is so you absolutely have to do the rhythm, and sometimes you have to do sometimes you have to do the rhythm against the meaning of the words a bit, and it. it uh, it took me about a week to get a couple of those lines because you just have to get it by rote. What's your tough <laughs> line? Um, well, you got trouble, my friends. Right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a bitty place. Oh, why, sh this is one. Okay. This is hard. <laughs> why, sure, I'm a bitty player. Certainly mighty proud to say I'm always mighty proud to say it. Now, if you don't do it like that, you're in big trouble. <laughs> but, but what's interesting... <laughs> you really got right, trouble. But what's interesting, I always thought about the Music Man score, and you, you've just touched on this, is that it is deceptively simple. I think these songs are a lot more sophisticated and complicated than, than people would think on the first hearing. Well, uh, there's a song that Marion uh, does with, um, of course it was the Buffalo Bills in our production with the, with the, with the um, Barbershop Quartet. Um, what's it called? Dream of now, dream of then, right. dream of a love song. Well, I can't even think of the name mm -hmm. of the song. Mm -hmm. And the two fit together, right, right. Light a Rose, they Light, say, right, and right. then Marion does this. Through the entire rehearsal, run, everything, I couldn't figure out why this thing stopped the show. Every single night, it would stop the show. And I thought, I'm sitting on stage, and I'm thinking, I think this is all very nice, but I can't figure out why it's stopping the show. 76 trombones, and you can understand, but not the barbershop. I saw the show for the first time when I went on vacation after about a year. Mm. 
and I got it. There's something so magical about those two things coming together so wonderfully. Yeah. And, and the way it fits together. Good night, my someone with 76 trombones. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it's a it's a brilliant it's a brilliant score. And the other thing I love about it too is that it it sends up and pokes fun at. Iowa people, people from the Midwest, but with such love for them, because it, it's Meredith himself. I mean, he knows those Absolutely. people. And that's a hard thing to do. Do you know what he once told me, too? Um, this was out of town, and he came up to me one day, he says, you know something? He said, I just realized last night who I was writing about when I wrote your character, my mother. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So he put, he put a lot of his life into that show. Yeah. Uh, before we go, I do want to give a plug for uh, your CD, Champion Season, uh, the musicals of Gower Champion, because I have it and I love it. It never leaves my turntable. And I thought your Carlisle act last <laughs> fall, where you sang all those Champion songs, was just terrific. You know, we've had really good feedback about that uh, that album. I'm happy to say. I was nervous about it because it's the only one we've ever done just with piano and bass, mm -hmm. and. Uh, all of, it's it really is the act, the dialogue, everything. Yeah, everything. There. And I thought, you know, fine if you want to hear a song a few times, but after a while, you're going to get sick of hearing all this talk. Barbara Cook Patter. <laughs> well, and maybe people do, as a matter of fact. But uh, we've had a, a tremendous reaction. Well, my favorite song, really as I told you, reaction. "Walking right. Among My Yesterdays" from um, the Happy, Happy time, time, right, which is on that album. That is, your rendition John of that. John Cander and Fred Ed. Yeah, made me cry when I heard you at the Carlisle. See, I do have a heart. Well, too. see, I always say I aim to make people miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I succeeded. Uh, Barbara Crick, it's always a pleasure seeing you. Thank you for being our guest tonight on Theater Talk. You're very welcome.